Hi. My name is JC McCauley. I'm Naisha McCauley, and, and you're, you're watching, watching AccessTV.org. Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald is a show where you will learn something new. It's a show for the courageous and want to be engaged. A show where we discuss any issue that affects the lives of people. And a show where we take inventory of our lives. Decision. Welcome to Candy Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. Welcome back to Candy Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald, the show that you like because it's for you. We're having a great time here at downtown Hartford at Spectral Wired Cafe celebrating New England Fashion Week's premier fashion event. I wish you were here with us, so we're bringing this coverage to you. I have one of the models that's participating here on set. Her name is Alana. And Alana is a model, a dancer. She's also the kids brand ambassador for Society 21 Clothing. Hi, Alana, how are you? Good. Good. I'm glad I'm having this opportunity to talk with you. Uh, you've been modeling for a little while now, right? Yeah. I, when I look at you, I think of a, a youth phenomena. Do you know what a youth phenomena is? A youth phenomenon is something like big and extraordinary. Exactly. That's exactly who you are. You are big, you're multi-talented, and you're extraordinary. Um, so how long have you been modeling again? About a year now. Okay. What, do you like best, what do you like best about modeling? I like the fashion shows because I like the cameras in front of me to like shine the bright in my face. Have you had a most memorable experience um, modeling, something that really stands out to you? Yes, yeah, so one fashion show, we were at Capital Community College, and we were doing a fashion show, and then we had a fire drill, and it was crazy, but it was also very fun. I hear also that you are a, a youth entrepreneur, um, not only the brand ambassador for um, Society 21's Kids Line, but I also hear that you are a, uh, a, a little, like a little businesswoman. Is that true? Yes. And how are you learning um, youth entrepreneurship? Just by expressing myself. What are some of the things that you are doing as a, a youth entrepreneur for Society 21 Clothing? Just by telling people, oh, um, look at this cool shirt I have. You want it? So you're like, you're like a great salesperson, huh? Yeah. I heard, I heard you've been racking up a lot of sales. Yeah. That's wonderful. And I also hear that you are a dancer. Okay, now, um, where do you dance? I dance for the Hartford Yargoats. You dance for the, the famous Hartford Yargoats? Wow. That's amazing. Now, how did that come to be? So, I guess my grandma, she just went online and she saw there was tryouts for the team and I did a tryout and then I got in. That's amazing. You seem like you're like really courageous, like courageous, fearless. You don't ever get afraid? You, when you do a photo shoot, you don't ever get like afraid or? No, but sometimes. Maybe. Wow, exactly. She is truly a, a youth phenomenon. I just want to thank you, Alana, for this opportunity, um, being on Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. And I also look forward to seeing you out there on the runway because you're going to be modeling today, too, as well. I know you have a very promising future ahead of you. Thank you so much. Fun. eBay. eBay's line of moisturizers and cleansers are my secret for healthier, younger looking skin every day. It's moisturizing care that lasts all day. Just right for every age and every skin type. eBay Microderm Cleanser gently cleans and nourishes your skin. 
Well, eBay Hand and Body Lotion provides deep, long-lasting moisture. They work together to keep your skin looking clean, healthy, and younger at home or on the go. No matter what your age or skin type, eBay's all-natural blend of vitamins, extracts, and emollients will moisturize, soothe, and soften your skin. And for a limited time, bring out the beautiful, healthy-looking you for only $29.99 with eBay Microderm Cleanser and Hand and Body Lotion. Pamper your skin today, the eBay way. Call 860-724-0606 or stop by our salon, Albany Avenue, Hartford. Welcome back to Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald, the show that you like because it's for you. Uh, we're here at New England Fashion Week's premier fashion event, and I have the pleasure of being in the presence of two lovely models that'll be, fat, who, that'll be modeling today here at New England Fashion Week. Um, the first model, flanked to my right, is Katrina. How are you, Katrina? Hi, my name is Katrina Jackson from Boston, Mass, visiting Hartford, Connecticut. Here, modeling for New England Fashion Week. Very excited. <laughs> You're working it, huh? I'm working it. That's what I came to do. It's later runway all day, you know? And you have a lot of experience in the, in the modeling world. Can you share some of your experience in the modeling world with our viewers? Most definitely. Um, like I said, from Boston, Mass. So I've done many local shows, charity events I'm into because I'm a community um, person. Also, Boston Fashion Week, New Hampshire Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, African Fashion Week, Caribbean Fashion Week. Um, so I'm a Fashion Week girl, as you can see, and um, I love modeling. I love inspiring women to be powerful and beautiful, and yeah, I'm here in Connecticut visiting to do the same. You're very well versed, definitely, definitely experienced and well versed. And uh, not, last but not least, I have also uh, Gabriella. Gabriella's in the studio with us. How are you, Gabriella? I'm very good. It's actually one of my very first fashion shows, so a little bit nervous, but we'll get through this. Wow, this is one of your first fashion shows? I know I had the opportunity of seeing you upstairs, just r walk the runway a little bit, and you, you really set, a set, you were set apart from everybody. I would have thought that this would not have been your first fashion show. There are people up there, some of the designers are like really falling in love with you. Yeah. Can you tell us, um, I think you have some design on now. You're wearing um, the wonderful gloves of uh, Jill Skinner from Image Gloves. And the hat. I have a wonderful set of gloves and hat, which I'm in love with. I may buy them off of her before the show, but sh we'll keep that between us. <laughs> you know, how do you uh, lovely ladies um, get this opportunity to be here modeling at New, New England Fashion Week? Well, um, I actually saw a Facebook post for the model casting for New England Fashion Week um, from Boston. So the day that it happened, I couldn't arrive. So I emailed and I did an online casting. Um, and I'm here and I appreciate that New England Fashion Week like my look and my walk on video. And I'm happy to be here to show what I can do in person. Wow, so you did your casting online. Yeah. Yeah. Gabriella, how did you find out about New England Fashion Week? I found out through word of mouth. Um, at Evie, which is one of the designers. I worked New York Fashion Week. I didn't walk, but I was helping the models in and out of outfits. And she was like, I think you would be a good fit. Give it a try. And I did, and now I'm here. I'm curious, like, what mark do you want to leave on the, the fashion industry? Trina. Um, well, my regular career job, I work with young people, young women, um, and I just want to leave the mark that it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter your size, your age, like you're beautiful and you should be confident and willing to show the world that beauty. Um, if you want to model, do it. And if the door closes in your face, there will be another one that opens. So I just want to show all my people in Boston that are following me, like, you know, I'm here in Connecticut and I went to New York and I went to New Hampshire and you can do it. You put yourself out there and, you know, you take a chance and people will take a chance on you. So there's such a strong movement, like sweeping through the country right now as it relates to um, women's empowerment in the fashion industry. It's just like 
it's just wonderful what I'm seeing, you know, and um, it's kind of making me worried a little bit because I think sometimes it's like some of the men, like, some of the men are like losing the roles and positions. They're becoming like kind of obsolete in some ways. And I really want to see men and women, you know, kind of work together. You know, everyone can bring their strengths to the table um, to push to push things forward. You know, what mark would you like to leave on the fashion um, industry, Gabriella? I know you're you're fairly new, but what mark would you like to leave? Um, I want everybody to know that you need to know your worth. You need to know your value. You can't let no one knock you down. And for every no, you will find five yeses. Most definitely. Um, the very first time I started shooting, they told me I wasn't tall enough. And look where I am now. I'm walking fashion week. It's not something easy to do, but I accomplished it because it was something I had a passion for. So. What advice would you give to a new model, Katrina? The advice what I, I would give is know that designers have a vision and just because they might not choose you that time, you don't fit the vision at that moment. It doesn't mean you're not beautiful and that you don't slay. So like we are saying, every no you'll get five yeses. So just take that no as not now. That's what the no is. The no is not now. It's not never. It's just not now. Gabriella, where did you get your, um, your runway experience, your runway walking experience from? Um, most of it was from Evie. She did have her daughter teach me how to walk because Nia does slay the runway, and we all know that. And I kind of fell in love with it, and I wanted to do it. I wanted to strive for it. So I got a couple of no's, but now, like I said, here I am, New England Fashion Week, and I'm going to rock it out. I can't wait to see you two walk down the runway. I mean, I saw, I saw you in practice and you look fabulous. I can't wait to see you. I just want to thank you two for being here on uh, Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald. And um, just, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Jim. All right. Thanks for having us. Thank you. We're going to take a break here on Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald. We'll see you right after our station break. You know something? Hartford's strength is the people. They're independent thinkers and love their city. So how did Hartford fall into the hands of rogue policymakers? Well, to start, this rogue group spent nearly one million dollars putting themselves on the inside and leaving you out in the cold. What if I told you that $5 can be the difference between a Hartford with hope and vision or a Hartford that is in perpetual decline, increasing crime, and an educational system going nowhere fast? Your $5 contribution to our team is a statement that you are investing in Hartford's future. Your $5 contribution to Macaulay for Mayor will make you a member of the team, and together we will explore the possibilities. More than that, you will be demonstrating that Hartford's people are ready to make a stand with Stan. Our goal is to get the support of 5,000 people who live, work, and play in Hartford. I'm asking you to make a bold statement by contributing $5 right now, today. If you believe in Hartford and its people like I do, make that contribution. And together we will show Connecticut that the people of Hartford care enough to do our part. We are ready to pick up the ball and run. The people of Hartford are back in the game and we're in it to win. 
My name is J. Sam Cauley, and I approve this message. Welcome back to Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald, the show that you like because it's for you. I have the pleasure of being with the GM of Spectral Wire Cafe, Julie, the GM here. How are you, Julie? I'm well. How are you? Um, I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. You look like you're doing fine, too. I see that, that beautiful smile you have. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? This is a wonderful venue. It's my first time here. Well, welcome. We'd love to have you here. But I know New England Fashion Week is really honored We're to be honored able to, to have, have this venue be the host for their first sure. first fashion event. And we're honored to be a part of that and to share with them this great venture and hope to be able to do this for many years to come. What are some of the wonderful things that you offer here in this um, this, this venue? I mean obviously the ambiance is just you know it's just wonderful. Well it's really great because during the day you can come in have a coffee drink get some cold brew when it's hot which is great great and refreshing. Come in for breakfast or lunch. And then our brand new addition is this bar five, which you come in, it's a fully stocked bar. And what sets us off and is a little unique is that we offer only local craft beers on tap. So you do local beers? We do wow. local. We try to it's do amazing. as much local as possible. We use the farmer's cow for our milk and eggs. We use ripe for our mixers. Excellent. So yes, definitely. And then this is our great new addition over here is our beer garden. Which oh, okay, so you have like a beer garden, like it's almost like a patio set up. Exactly. And you can come out there, have a few drinks, enjoy your evening. We have a lot of uh, board games laying around. We have a few people that come in, have a few drinks, play some board games out there. Amazing. And then we'll have some live music starting out there very soon. It's great that you support local businesses, you know, yes, right in the community. Important. You get a lot of your raw materials and resources from companies right here in the state of Connecticut. We do. Which is, which is fabulous. Yes, so. it's very important to support all of our Connecticut-based businesses. Well, we're happy to be here at Spectre Wire Cafe. Julie, Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having for us. Here. Thank you for being here. Welcome back to Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald, the show that you like because it's for you. I am um, lucky enough to have the ones who are, imp who are responsible for this entire event. Uh, the New England Fashion Week staff is in the building. I'm going to introduce them to you. I have here Kayla. Kayla is the COO of New England Fashion Week. How are you, Kayla? I'm good. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate having you here. I'm happy to be here. I also have the CEO. No other but no no other but Joseph Wade. Thanks for having us. Glad to have you here, Joseph. I also have the treasurer. The treasurer here is Suheli. How are you, Suheli? I'm doing good. Thank you for having us. That's great. That's great. How is uh, New England Fashion Week supporting uh, 
the community through this event, Mr. Wade? showcase their talents, um, some local designers, um, dancers, local vendors. Mm. And then a pro uh, portion of the proceeds we are also donating to charity too. So we're going to be doing a charity walk toward the end of the month and then a lot of our events in the future will also be geared toward charities. So great that you support um, local charities here in the state of Connecticut. It's amazing. And some people just look at these events as just a fashion event. They don't really know that the, uh, the community purpose behind it. And um, I know that there's so much good community purpose behind it. You know, I noticed um, in the fashion industry, you know, there's a lot of challenges. Um, and particularly in this region, like in the region of Connecticut. Um, what would you say is some of the greatest challenges that the, um, the fashion community here in, in New England face? Um, I think that some of the challenges that the fashion world faces in the New England area is that um, people are scared to like branch out and work with other artists, like from different states even. So that's why here at New England Fashion Week, we brought in designers from out of state. Um, most of our designers are not from Connecticut. I think only two to three of them are. The rest are from out of state. Um, so we're just trying to touch on all New England states and just incorporate everybody and get everybody to want to work together and have each other's back. Would you like to chime in, Swahili? Okay. What would you say, uh, Joe? What What was the purpose of the creation of a, a New England Fashion Week? Why Why create a New England Fashion Week? I think what we wanted to do is bring something different to the table and not be stuck in one region. Um, like Kayla said, just work with a lot of people, and we just came together as a team as every avenue of the fashion business. We have makeup artists, models, uh, designer, uh, all together as one. We figured we could build a decent team. Yeah, so basically we saw we each have had our part in fashion shows in different states or within Connecticut. So we saw what each of them had that was really great, but we also saw what each of them had that wasn't so great. So I feel like as a team we come together and we could kind of all piece by piece put it together and fill in those gaps and just make it a really fun event for everybody to want to come to. What do you feel sets you apart from a lot of other fashion people, fashion companies in the fashion community here in New England? So I think what would set New England Fashion Week apart would be that we don't want to do just your typical walk straight down the runway. We want to incorporate artists and dancers and other talent because there's so much more than just modeling, you know what I mean? It is the industry itself it is a whole and you can be more than a model. Some of our model is also a designer and a painter. So just bringing everybody and incorporating it all, having each other's back and I'm curious to know, how did you actually become an officer of like New England Fashion Week? Um, so Haley, what was your role to becoming a uh, treasurer of New England Fashion Week? Well, we just all wanted to come together and build something big for us. We all are a part in different ways. Like we have designers, we have models, like we've been in the fashion industry in different, you know, roles. More specifically, um, what was your journey to become treasurer? Like, how did you first start? How did you first get connected um, with the leadership here at New England Fashion Week? Well, I started working with, with Joe as his model, and then we develop a, a friendship and a business together where we can trust each other to make a business together, you know? You're a fabulous model. I mean, I mean she, started here as a, she started as a model, and now she is a treasurer of New England Fashion Week, which is amazing. So, you can start somewhere in the industry and you can actually work your way up. You can kind of like level up and become a person who's an officer um, in the business. So which is like really amazing. And I actually was able to see that, that evolution. Um, what are some of the designers that are going to be here uh, today, uh, Mr. Wade? We have um, Structure Wear from Chicago. Um, Taylor Love Couture from um, Boston, I believe. I think that she's located in Rhode Island right now, but she actually is from Hartford, Connecticut. And um, we have a designer from the UK, actually, uh, Alicia Mullings. A A M. So we really have a, a, a lot of excitement, a lot of excitement to look forward to for the rest of the night. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. I mean, I saw um, the background upstairs, and I saw the quality and the caliber of the models, and it's just 
beautiful, beautiful models and beautiful um, fashion designs. So I'm really looking forward to being a part of it. I want to thank the staff of New England Fashion Week for being here on Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. I wish you much success. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you for tuning in to Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. We're going to take a station break. I'll see you right after our break. Welcome back to Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald. The show that you like because it's for you. We're here at New England Fashion Week, uh, downtown Hartford, Spectre Wired Cafe, having a great time. And uh, I have the pleasure of having uh, two uh, pivotal people in the fashion and entertainment industry here with me. First person who's flanked to me to the right is Shania Torres, and uh, she is a, a triple threat. Um, she's a New York City uh, actress, uh, model, and dancer. I just want to thank you for being here on the Candid Conversation set. Shania, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me, Daryl. And sitting beside uh, Shania Torres, I have a gentleman here. His name is Mr. Lonnie Posley, and he's a fashion designer from Chicago, Illinois, right? Would you like to introduce yourself to our uh, Candid Conversation audience, sir? Yes, uh, I'm Lonnie Posley out of Chicago, Illinois. I'm an artist plus a designer, and also I'm an art therapist. And also, my mom is an interior decorator, so I'm a triple threat. Okay. All right, so we have two triple threats here at New England Fashion Week. You said you are art therapist? Art therapist. Now, what, what exactly is art therapy? Explain that to our viewers. Art therapist uh, started during the time of 9-11, where uh, Bill Clinton's wife, when the, the bombing took place, the kids start, wanted to express themselves, and so what she did was she gathered kids together and they started doing art. And art has the power to heal. That's true. That's definitely a true statement. That's how I got involved with the arts, with my writing, is, is a way of therapy. You take off um, illness, the I off of illness, and put W-E is wellness. Exactly. Hey, Shania Torres, you have a, a very wide background yes. in, in art. Okay, like I said, from dancing to acting to modeling. Can you tell the audience a little bit about uh, your, your dance uh, career? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I've been dancing for about 15 years. Um, I started when I was two years old. Uh, I'm about to graduate from LaGuardia High School. I've danced at Alvin Ailey uh, American Dance Theater. I've danced at Restoration Youth Arts Academy. Dance Theater of Harlem, any, anywhere you could possibly think of, I've probably been there. So, yeah. for, for those people who don't know, she, she danced with two of the biggest institutions in the dance world, meaning um, LaGuardia. That's the, the famous fame school, correct? Definitely. And she danced with the famous Alvin Ailey uh, dance repertoire, international Alvin Ailey dance repertoire. That must have been an amazing experience. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience um, dancing for um, Alvin Ailey? Well, I dance with the school, so I've, I've trained with uh, Alvin Ailey. I've, I dance in the school, not necessarily with the company. But I am auditioning for the company, and hopefully I get in, fingers crossed. Um, as far as LaGuardia, um, being trained at LaGuardia, that's been an amazing experience. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Can you tell us what is one of your most um, noteworthy experiences modeling? Modeling? I would say modeling in general. Um, starting off as a model, 5'3", very curvy, um, it's, it's very intimidating because you're against girls that are six foot and you know it's like designers look for that and you have to be a size zero and two and I'm just trying to uh, break the mold of the quintessential model and um, yeah. So what do you think um, that competitive edge that you bring forth because you're, you're competing against models who are a lot taller and um, um, maybe have a certain frame 
So what, what sets Shania apart? Well, I am 5'3", and I am very, very curvy, and um, I am Latina and black, so all of those different aspects of me just bring a different... But what do you do to edge out the competition? What do you do on a runway? What do you do? I just bring me, my personality, my just me. I push me forward as an artist. That's amazing. That's amazing. And you do shine brightly. You shine brightly. I'm really curious, Mr. Posey. I want to know a little bit more about your fashion designs. Can you tell our Candid Conversation audience about your fashion designs, sir? Being an art therapist, uh, I incorporated my art right into my designs. Uh, and my personal story is that I had a family member that was diagnosed bipolar schizophrenia. And I saw the power of what art could do heal. And people love to feel pretty. And so my mom been a designer and I started actually started designing at the age of 12 when my mom was diagnosed with cancer so I used to pin I used to cut and I didn't want to do it as a boy but 40 years later it manifested itself and I have art hanging in the, um, the state capitol with uh, Dan Malloy I did work for Newtown and I also I did an art piece an art healing treat there and had a chance to meet this triple threat at the New York fashion uh, summer explosion and she wore some pieces of mine and my with my daughter and which is a model as well and uh, and her and Shania just they just messed the runway up yeah, yeah. wow wow yeah. yeah so this is this is your this is your piece mr. Posley okay on top of um, spandex with the feather and her shoes are also uh, with fabric paint on those as well that matches the uh, the outfit as well. So every splash paint. So I incorporate again art and uh, fashion together. Very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. I wanted to ask you too, what is the repertoire of like your designs? You, you design uh, men's clothing, women's clothing? Uh, the, the, matter of fact, the jeans I have on now, uh, rip and tear and canvas is underneath. And so I do men and blazers. So this is, this is not one of the, the blazers are coming out to match the jeans as well. So I do jeans. Uh, casual jeans and splash paint uh, with a men's wear as well. Yeah. Where, where can we find your designs, Mr. Posey? How, do we, how, how does the general audience get in uh, contact connection with your designs? The process now, uh, uh, by, the, by March, I mean, I'm sorry, by August, no later than October, we'll be online. We'll be online so you get a chance. It's coming into view. It's coming into view, yes. That is amazing. That is amazing. I am really looking forward to this fashion show. After each interview, it's just making, it's just, it's just making my mouth wet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and certainly, it's an honor to have both of you here on the Candid Conversations with, with Daryl Set. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you walk down the runway, Shania. Uh, thank you for your time. And um, certainly going to look forward to seeing even greater, greater things come from both of you in the, in the fashion industry. You want to share your Instagram? Yes, um, Structurewear uh, Instagram and also Dreams and Images, uh, also my Instagram. Dreams and Images is the uh, styling and Structurewear is the fashion. But thanks for that information. We're going to take a, a station break here, a candid conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. We look forward to seeing you after our station break. Thank you for tuning in to Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald. Um, I'm really excited to go see what New England Fashion Week is going to unveil here at their premier fashion uh, and modeling uh, fashion show. And, um, but I also just want to thank uh, Mr. Darren Champion. He's ambassador and chief marketing officer of Shop Free Mart for his support of this episode of Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald. I'll see you next time.